I haven't spoken about the other part of the book, which is why is it the world economy is in such difficulty. And I'd just like to put yourself, put yourself for a minute in the shoes of someone who came from Mars to look at our economy today. And they would say, well, I learned that you had a big financial crisis in 2008, really big crisis. Um, clearly you had a downturn and you're trying to get a sustainable recovery. I see that you've applied the biggest monetary stimulus the world has ever seen. And yet eight, eight years on, we have not got to a sustainable recovery. Have you thought, the man from Mars or the woman from Mars might say, that maybe monetary policy isn't the answer? Now, at one level, that seems obvious. But because economists see themselves as physicists and have put themselves in the position of using their favorite computer models, they're unable to escape from a trap, which is that the only framework they can think in terms of is one in which the only thing that will work is yet more monetary stimulus. And yet we're in a position where one of the things that happened in the crisis was that investment was misallocated across sectors. There was too much investment in residential housing here, in commercial building in Britain, and in infrastructure in China. The world economy has got itself into what I call in the book a disequilibrium, in which the balance between saving and spending is out of sync. The symptom of that is that real interest rates in the world have come down and down and down until they're now zero. And financial markets do not expect them to go back to the historical average of 3 to 4% a year anytime soon. So I looked up the numbers uh, yesterday, and if you look at the... Uh, so he, he, let me pose the question first. Let's suppose it takes 10 years from today to get back to normal. Well, the Federal Reserve would like to think it would take a lot less than that. But let's be pessimistic for a moment. Let's suppose it takes 10 years to get back to, to normal. The normal average real interest rate on, say, 10-year government bonds is in the 3 to 4% a year range. What does the market believe today will be the 10-year real interest rate 10 years from now? Answer, after last week's Fed move, 1%. Way below 3 to 4%. In other words, the market is not expecting normalization within my lifetime. I find that a troubling prospect. Either that we're condemned to a world in which the market economy will not function properly because investment decisions can't be rationally allocated because real rates are far too low, or maybe real rates will go up faster than the market expects, in which case the market will get a nasty shock and asset prices will come down below the levels they are today, exposing some of the indebtedness that is out there. Now, again, this is a failing, in my view, of the ideas that the economics profession have been using. I don't want to blame anyone, or, but my point is that the, the really important questions that come out of the financial crisis are not, you know, who was to blame, why haven't we sent a few people to prison? These are not the important questions. And if you go away thinking, if only we sent a few people, or even a lot of people, to prison, we'd be fine. We wouldn't. It was a failure of a system. And unless we think through how to improve the system, then the future will suffer. And I chose to dedicate the book to my grandchildren because I fear that it will be their generation that gets round to saying, I wish we'd changed things after the last crisis, but we didn't really change them enough. But this time we really will do it. Let's hope I'm wrong and that we'll change the system before that. And I think we do have a chance to change it very effectively. Let me stop and, and throw it open for questions. <laughs>